Okay, so let's continue on our discussion of probability. So last class we talked about um, our basic ideas of probability. So remember that probabilities have to be less than or equal to one. They can't be more, they can't be less. Uh, all probabilities are just between zero and one. All right, so that's our basic idea of probability. And then we talked about that the probability of an event is just equal to the number of outcomes in the event divided by the number of outcomes in your sample space. And so we talked a little bit about, okay, remember our sample space, we had, we can roll a dice. And if we roll a dice, that would be one, two, three, four, five, six. And if our event is rolling two or less, that would be one and two. The probability here for event A would then be equal to two outcomes in A divided by the six outcomes in your sample space. And so we'd get two six or one third. So that's our kind of our intro once again. Now we can also ask some other questions. So when we have our sample space as defined by our box and we have an event on the inside A, we can have another event, you know, we can have other events too. We can have an event called B and let's do a third one. We'll have an event called C. Okay, so we notice how A and B do not overlap. So if they don't overlap, mutually exclusive, let's put that up again. Okay, they're mutually exclusive. A and C, they are not mutually exclusive. So let's talk about, we can ask about some other things. So these guys, there's an intersect region there. All right, so let's do a new event. We've got event A over there, and now we're going to do, let's do event B. And event B is going to be equal to, we'll say we want to do roll an even number. So we've got two, four, and six is for our even number. So that would be like, well, all right, hold on. Let's actually make this match. So this should be instead, event C. There we go. So if we want to know what is the probability of being A and C, or we also call this intersect. Okay, so the probability of intersect or and, we would have to know, okay, what are all of the outcomes that occur in both C and A. So if we look at these two, we know that, hey, the number two is in both event A and event C. So that would be one divided by our sample space, still six, that'd be one six. All right, let's do another one. Let's do, okay, what is the probability of A? Okay, we're gonna do this big kind of U and then C. So this is union or we could think of just or. So now we want to know what a, what's the probability of being A or C. Okay, well, let's figure it out. So in order to do this, it would be the probability of A plus the probability of C minus the probability of A intersect C. We got to subtract out the intersect because if we don't, we would double count the intersection. So for, he, for here, for A union C, we would have this equals to the probability of event A, which was 2, 6, plus the probability of event C, which was 3, 6, minus the intersection, which is 1, 6, which would give us a total of 4, 6. And we can double check this. So from our two events, we would count all unique outcomes. So we'd have one, two, four, and six. We have four unique outcomes. Now, if we were to do A union B, 
we would do the same thing. We'd still take the probability of A plus the probability of B. The only difference is, is that the probability of A intersect B is zero because there's no overlap. So this term would just drop out to zero and then A union C would just be the probability of, well for this one it would be A union B would be the probability of A plus the probability of B.